uh, its first iteration as a program was a plagiarism checker. Mm -hmm. um, that is how it started. It's how I used it when I was in college and during my master's and, and my doctoral coursework. Um, however, it has it is transformed and has a much more user interface for instructors on the front end to create a culture of academic integrity, to teach what plagiarism is, how students can unintentionally plagiarize, um, and for teachers to have consistency in providing feedback. Um, so some of the things um, my staff particularly enjoys and the teachers that I've trained um, in, in some of the more nuanced pieces of this enjoy are quick marks. So teachers can highlight something and provide a quick mark. They can customize quick marks. There are consistent standard driven rubrics um, based on grade level. There are rubrics for responses to math open-ended questions for science open-ended questions, um, AP rubrics. There's also the ETS e-reader. So the same um, technology that's used by the college board and by um, when students take the SAT or the pre-SAT, um, that same technology is utilized by Turnitin as well. Um, there are also student tools. So there is a peer feedback studio and there is something called Draft Coach, which is a Microsoft Word or Google Docs um, Chrome extension where students are getting the same information that their instructors will be provided ahead of time. So they can go back up to three times and go back into their work and continue to revise. The emphasis in the in the writing process is really on that revision and editing. Um, so Turnitin has really um, helped in that. Turnitin will not tell us if a student plagiarized or not because there are different types of assignments. So if a student is in an AP course, they are in AP seminar and they are preparing an annotated bibliography, their similarity report may come back 92% similar. That doesn't mean they plagiarize, it means that they're citing sources and it's coming up with similar phrases, similar wording. Um, on the other end, um, a student might be asked to read a text and write an original response. We would expect that to have a 0% similarity report. If that comes back with a 50% similarity report, the student used sources that they weren't intended to use. And we use that as a teaching opportunity throughout the year. I will have teachers who come to me and say, you know, this is kind of what happened. And we talk through it. It's a teaching opportunity. It's a learning opportunity. I just have one comment. Um, when we talk about culture, if you talk to high school students about turning in, they say it's used to find out if they're cheating. Mm -hmm. That's the culture that we've created is that we shouldn't trust our students. And I know I brought that up several times um, throughout this year, but I think that if, if it, that is not the intent of this, I think there needs to be um, more of an education given to the students, why it's being used, what it's being used for, because you talk to any high school student, they're like, they just wanna see if we're cheating. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the culture we're creating. <laughs> and I think that putting a, um, a, uh, a program in charge of assigning what a child has done wrong or um, you know, trying to assess their work is taking away from our teachers. I think our teachers are supposed to be doing that and focused on that. And I think the writing um, in our district, we need to be more um, pushing our writing skills and developing that early on. I know we have Readers Writers Workshop that has really not helped us in the younger grades. And I think that that should be our focus. Um, I'm not a fan of Turnitin from what I've heard from high school students, but that's just my opinion. I just wanted to put that out. Okay, so I'll say uh, I, I the re one of the reasons I, I kind of pushed back on this in finance last month was because I'm not a big fan of it at this level. I really am not. I think at the college level, I think that it, it's definitely appropriate and um, you know, people pay people to write their papers in college. I, I mean, that's just sort of the thing. And I just think that um, we're, it is so maybe we could reculture this, but um, when you commented about, you know, well, the it gives the teacher suggestions as whether they want to work on this or what they want to do, or the student can can watch a video. Isn't that what the teachers are supposed to be doing? Like taking that paper and giving them opportunities to 
rewrite it? Do they do they, drafts? They do, do, yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, I just am thinking, and I understand we live in a very highly technical mm -hmm. world and things are very technical, but we have students that are really, they're not very well, not well, well written, I guess it's the best word. Mm -hmm. I'm not well spoken at the moment. <laughs> um, but it, it's because, and, and, and a lot of it has to do with this, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Everything is, you know, I, I work with people who have doctoral and master degrees and you can't even believe the emails and the reports and things that I receive and how the writing is so just absolutely abysmal. Um, so I just, I, I'm, you know, I'm torn between this. I, I, I know that we've been using it for about eight years. I just feel like we're sort of using it to replace teachers. I see, I understand the teacher feedback and the quick marks and, you know, I, I, I'm, I just, I just, I'm, I'm I'm not happy about it being in the high school. I'm much more dissatisfied that we're bringing this to the middle school. I really think the it's not appropriate. School, the, the goal is, I, I want to clarify for that, is for the writing benchmarks. So 